Hey, what's up guys, it's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today, and today we are talking about bioactive setups on this fine May 15th, the 15th day of May Madness. So some of you guys were asking in my newest setup video, I will leave a link up right now if you guys want to go check it out, as to how like the whole bioactive setup kind of works. And first I want to make a distinction between bioactive vivariums and naturalistic vivariums. Bioactive vivariums include live plants and live vertebrates that are introduced to break down the waste of the animal inhibiting the cage. Whether that is a lizard, a frog, a snake, whatever you put in there. Uh, the invertebrates will do their job, break down waste, whether it's mold or, or the physical waste itself. That's what makes it bioactive. It's basically self-recycling and self-sustaining. Now a naturalistic vivarium is basically mimicking the natural habitat of the animal that you're wanting to inhabit. This will be done by using natural branches, sand, moss, uh, pretty much anything else, rocks that you typically find in their natural habitat. The plants in there can be real. With the addition of live plants that kind of pushes it to a more bioactive vivarium because the plants themselves will break down waste over time but it's essentially not adding any invertebrates or any like cleanup crew in order to help your vivarium be sustainable. Now some of you guys might be wondering how would I set up one of these and like I said earlier if you haven't checked out that other video you basically see the whole process from the naturalistic background with background mix being applied all the way to the drainage layer, the barrier, the substrate itself, and the addition of the invertebrates. Just to sum it all up, the first thing you want to have is a drainage layer. And as you can see here, there is a bare bottom one with basically just like ceramic beads that you find in a fish filter. And there's also the one that you can see now that is like the expanded clay pebbles. You can also use lava rock or leca, like the expanded clay pebbles, like I said here, to basically provide that separation between the water and the substrate itself. So the drainage layer basically allows for water to drain into it and not uh, make your soil anaerobic. So how can you tell that you have anaerobic bacteria? You essentially start to smell that like... I don't know whether it's sulfur smell, but it basically smells very gross and like a sewer. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. If you've had like soil sitting in a tub of water, eventually it'll happen. It's just kind of gross. So adding that separation barrier and the like substrate, the drainage layer, prevents that from happening. I would also recommend including a PVC tube or in my case a pill bottle as you can see here to aid in draining that and allowing for some maintenance. The second most important thing is the substrate itself. This will basically provide breeding habitat as well as a medium for your invertebrates to breed as well as plants to grow in. So the making of a good substrate, you want a rich, well-draining soil. So hopefully a decent amount of nutrients as well as very well draining. The AGB mix, you can buy it at Josh's Frogs, you can buy it if you're in Canada from Jungle Jewel Exotics. It works very well. Basically, I make my own now at this point. It consists of peat moss, coconut core, tree fern, fir bark, charcoal. Uh, essentially, you make like a one to one mix of peat moss, coconut core, and then fir bark, as well as mixing about half of one part to of charcoal and or carbon and tree fern. So I do make this substrate in a card up above. You can click that and it's basically me setting up like a temporary froglet tank for my baby dart frogs. This involves me showing you how to make and what I use in my mix. The third and final thing that is required to have a bioactive substrate or tank is the invertebrates. The most commonly used invertebrates are the ones that I'm showing here. The pill bugs or isopods which you can get several different varieties. There's orange ones, there's brown ones, there's white ones. I have the brown and white ones here. Not many of the other ones are attainable in Canada at this moment, or at least I don't know where to get them if they are. And then there's also the springtails. And you, like you can see here, these guys are super, super tiny, a lot smaller than the isopods, and they jump. So I'm going to blow on it right now, and you can kind of see them freaking out and wigging out on uh, the wind. So now that we've covered what is involved in a bioactive setup, what a bioactive vivarium is, and how to attain it. I'm just going to list off a couple of the benefits right now. Basically, the main benefits are you don't really need to clean your substrate, ever. If done properly, ever. 
Um, now you can mess up and you can add not enough drainage, so you basically have to redo the drainage so you, your tank starts to go anaerobic and you have to clean it all out, redo it, and then you're hopefully set the second time. But besides that, there's not really any cases that you need to clean the whole bottom of the tank, which is why dart frogs and day geckos, uh, the smaller day geckos as well as larger day geckos can be kept in these systems very well because a they're more sensitive they're sensitive to the humidity as well as to like human interaction with minimized human interaction you can see their natural behaviors start to come out this is just something of beauty you can't really attain this when you have a cage that's just a plain old bin and you're changing the paper out once a week you know it's just not the same. Another benefit of having the live substrate is obviously this is more of a live plant kind of benefit, but cleaner air as well as higher humidity. Um, the plants will clean out the air, will filter CO2 and produce oxygen as well as water. So they, they transpire and that is basically releasing water into the atmosphere. So with more live plants, in theory, you're gonna have more humidity. Something that's pretty amazing about the bioactive setups is the ability to recycle waste. These pill bugs, these springtails, basically recycle waste and make it nutrients for the plants so they will enjoy it, your plants will grow, your colonies of invertebrates will grow, and the waste is broken down very quickly and not left to kind of get all gross and grungy, uh, so long as you have a good enough colony in the tank established. And the third and final point, as you can see here, these guys are just beautiful. No matter the inhabitants, if you are somebody like me and you really like biology and plants and animals specifically, for people like me in a climate that is typically like 30% humidity and not very hot or cold, uh, summers are warm, winters are cold, some of these plants you can grow are completely out of reach in any other situation you would have to make a vivarium like this to be able to grow them unless you have an exotic greenhouse and you're heating and humidifying and keeping that up there's really no other way to do it it's simply the pure beauty of these that have drawn me to them ever since i started my new job dart frogs has become very very prominent in my life they're really really cool they allowed me to grow some amazing plants and these natural vivariums are just something that they have allowed me to dive into with my head first and just go I've made three now, something like that. So honestly, this just boils down to the efficiency of a vivarium and the beauty of a vivarium. If you like the look and you want a challenge, of course, it'll take a couple before you nail it. You have to understand how the plants are going to grow. You have to understand how the animals inside are going to use it. There's a lot to factor in. And honestly, sometimes it's done better than others. Just getting started is what needs to happen. I know uh, Woody's Gamer Tag says it touch it every day, and that is basically like do something about it every day even if it's just a little something whether it's buying your tank or getting some of the things needed to start the tank or doing it all at one time that's important you just need to do it so I think that has concluded my rambling about bioactive vivariums I hope this has helped you all out and has been quite informative to you so you can now go off and build your own if you like the video be sure to drop a like down below if you've made it to the very very end of this video leave the word moss in the comment section down below and if you want to see more of May Madness and some of my other videos subscribe to my channel we have frogs we have plants we have reptiles we have shrimp there's a whole lot of stuff going on here so whatever your interests hopefully i can keep you entertained and i hope you guys enjoyed i'll catch you on the next video graphic phoenix out of here